Chapter 1, Section 4. This is about facts, hypotheses, theories, and laws. So our learning outcomes here are basically you need to be able to define each one of these and understand the difference between a fact, a law, a hypothesis, and a theory. The terms facts, laws, hypotheses, and theories, they often have different meanings in science than what we might have in our common everyday usage. And the difference between what is in science versus our everyday usage is actually pretty big and it really does matter. So we really need to learn what these things mean scientifically. Here's some examples. A fact, the earth is round. Here's a law. Gravity attracts objects to the earth at about 9.8 meters per second squared. A theory, natural selection causes adaptive evolution. So for example, when you look at that Katie did in that picture, that Katie did looks like a leaf because of natural selection causing it to evolve to look like a leaf. Let's begin with facts. That's the first one. Here's how we can define a fact. It is something that actually exists or happens. Now one thing about facts, they are verified by repeatable experiments and observations. So one thing about facts, you might be entitled to your own opinions, but you're not entitled to your own facts. Facts are immutable. They're the same everywhere. Like the sun will rise in the east, it will set in the west. Those are facts. Another fact, the earth is round. We haven't always known that fact for the history of our species, but nobody disputes the fact that the earth is spherical in shape, meaning it's basically round. And if you look very closely, you can see where we're at in North America, right next to the Sandia Mountains. Warning. What I'm about to talk about is not a political statement. I'm not rooting for one type of politician over the other right here. But when it comes to science, facts have specific meaning. And I'm going to call it like it is. Alternative facts are falsehoods and lies. There is no such thing as an alternative fact. Facts are fact. You can observe them. You can measure them. You can test for them. They are not disputable. And like I said, there are no such thing as alternative facts. Science is based on observations. Facts are based on observations. There are more people on the right than there are on the left. There is no alternative way of looking at this. And that is something about science. Anybody can make the observation. Anybody can make that count. Over and over and over again, we can come up with the same results. At that point, your opinion doesn't matter. It's the facts that matter. I love Neil deGrasse Tyson. He's one of my favorites. And he's a great science advocate. And he says, when different experiments give you the same results, it is no longer subject to your opinion. That's the good thing about science. It's true whether or not you believe in it. And that's why science works. Next are scientific laws. Here's a good one, the law of gravity. The law of gravity basically predicts that an object dropped to the earth will fall at the same rate every single time. So if you drop a pen or any object, no matter how light or how heavy it is, it will drop at about 9.8 meters per second squared. So it predicts the same outcome under the same circumstances. One thing about a law, it doesn't really propose a mechanism. So for example, the law of gravity doesn't exactly explain how gravity works, it just tells you what's going to happen. Gravity works everywhere. It doesn't matter where you're at. So if you were to drop an object on Jupiter, it would actually fall much faster because Jupiter is much larger than the Earth. And in fact, if you notice a great red spot, that great red spot is actually much larger than the Earth itself. Here's some other laws that are incredibly important for us to understand in science, especially for biology. These are the laws of thermodynamics. They govern energy and energy transformations. And as a living organism, you need lots of energy to stay alive. So I'm showing you a fire right here. And a fire is showing you an energy transformation. Basically, there's wood. 
and energy is stored in that wood. We call that potential energy. But energy can be transferred or transformed. That's part of the first law of thermodynamics. But we don't destroy energy. We can't create it either. So the first law is also known as the conservation of energy because energy is not being created or destroyed. However, you can transfer it or transform it. So in this case, we're watching a fire where energy is being transformed into heat and light from energy that's stored in um, the bonds of cellulose. We may not be able to uh, create or destroy energy, but uh, that sounds good. Unfortunately, there's this second law of thermodynamics. And the second law of thermodynamics is not my favorite one. It basically says, hey, every time you transform or transfer energy, basically every time you use energy, the amount of energy available for, to do work becomes less available. And the reason why is because every time we use energy, entropy increases. And look at this wording right here. Entropy is a measure of disorder, meaning the more entropy, the higher the disorder there is. So when you look at it, imagine a whole bunch of dots coming together. At the left side with the E, that's highly ordered, low entropy. As you go to the right, they become less and less ordered and you have higher entropy. So every time we use energy, entropy increases. For our third definition, let's talk about hypotheses. You probably already have a pretty good idea of what a scientific hypothesis is. It's not an educated guess, but what it is is a proposed explanation for a set of observations or it makes some type of prediction of an outcome. So for example, a long time ago, almost 2200 years ago, Eratosthenes made two observations. One was that there was a small shadow cast at a post up in Alexandria, but at the same time of day, south of him in Syene, there was no shadow being cast by a post. So he proposed that the earth was round rather than flat. He measured the distance between the two posts and he pretty much correctly calculated the circumference of the earth within a couple hundred miles. Astounding if you ask me. His hypothesis was well supported by his observations. Here's the last one, theories. Here's Inigo Montoya from The Princess Bride, one of my favorite movies of all time. And he kept saying, you keep using that word. I do not think it means what you think it means. And that goes for theory. Theory is one of the most abused words in our language. And this usage in science versus our common everyday usage is very, very different. But here's what a theory does. A theory makes a broad, powerful explanation for a set of observations. Now, unlike in the common everyday usage, scientific theories have been very well supported by many observations and many experiments. And that's different from just saying, hey, I have a theory about why my car doesn't work. That's not really a theory. That's an idea or a hypothesis, but not scientific theories. They are actually well supported. Perhaps one of the most revolutionary theories of all time was Einstein's general theory of relativity. His general theory was published in 1915 and it actually explained gravity and what it said was that objects of mass curve space-time. So there is our sun in the middle and there's the earth orbiting the sun and the sun is so massive that it's warping the space around it so earth is actually falling in the gravity well but since it's moving around the sun it actually doesn't fall into the sun. So by explaining gravity, Einstein said, objects of matter warp space-time. And that is a theory that has been supported by over a hundred years of observations. In addition to the theory of relativity, another revolutionary theory was Darwin's theory of evolution by natural selection. I'm being a little cheeky here with Homer sapien showing the descent of Homer from monkeys eat a lot as to Homer sapien. But evolution by natural selection, like Einstein's theory of relativity, it also revolutionized the way we conduct science and the way we view the natural world. 
Okay, as a review, what you need to be able to do is, can you differentiate between a fact, a law, hypothesis, and a theory? Can you also give an example of each one as well? You know, I love science, and this is a Nolus proboscis from near Mindo, Ecuador, on the western slopes of the Andes Mountains. And I love science, because figuring things out is always better than making it up. Your foundational knowledge. Make sure you can define fact, law, theory. You need to also memorize the laws of thermodynamics. Recall the laws of thermodynamics govern energy and how it's transferred and transformed. And you need to know both the first law, the second law, entropy, and I keep bringing up this word uniformitarianism. Hey, it's a big word, but uniform. Uniform just means everything's the same. So what does uniformitarianism mean?